So in this video, it's more of a show and tell than uh, building anything. And you'll have to forgive me that the heater is on because it is 24 freaking degrees outside. A little bit of snow on the ground and that's cold. So it's nice and warm in the uh, camper. Got a little heater going and I usually keep that running 24-7. Uh, it comes on and off when it uh, warms up in here, but it feels good. So, on with the video. What do I have to show you? So, some of the things that I'm thinking about as far as power goes, we have solar power, we've got our batteries, and I do have some AC electrical when I'm plugged into shore power, but what am I going to do if I'm not plugged into shore power? Well, that's the neat little thing. Uh, two things. One, what will I do if I am plugged into the shore power and at night or on cloudy days when there is no sun to charge the batteries from the solar panels. So, in that case, I have a handy dandy little Power Max 40 amp, 45 amp, excuse me, uh, power converter and that is going to charge my batteries at nighttime or during cloudy rainy days or coastal weather here in Oregon. So if you go to Oregon coast sometimes it's not all that sunny and it's a lot of fog and clouds. So this will come in handy if I'm plugged in I can recharge my batteries or uh, actually run all my lights while this is plugged in and feel right at home. And next is my new toy. I did end up buying the Xantrex uh, Pro Watt SW 2000 Watt Inverter. Now, reading all of the reviews for this inverter, it doesn't actually put out 2000 watts continuous. It's more around 1800 watts continuous power. So. With that, let me show you the items that we're going to be running for this thing when not plugged into shore power, how we're going to run our electricity, and uh, some of the watts that we'll be pulling off of this, and hopefully it works out just fine. But before we do all of that, we're going to do a little bit of unboxing, because uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Let me turn on the light. Yeah, we'll turn that one on. How's that? So, Pro Watt, 2000 Watt, Xantrex. When we open the box, first thing we have is we have all the manuals, which I will certainly read. Um, a lot of ifs and what ifs over cable size and how long you can run and how many watts can be pulled from this. So. I will be sure to read that really good. Next is the ProWatt SW remote panel and I plan on installing that over here on my wardrobe wall where when I come in I can push the button and turn on the inverter without having to lift my bench seats up. So that's going to come in handy. On to the unboxing. See if I can get this out of here. Awesome. It's kind of packaged pretty nice. Wrapped. Nice little plastic bag here covering our unit. Unit looks pretty stout, sturdy. Yes. It's got a nice little ground fault uh, receptacle in the front for testing and resetting. Now, listening to uh, the reviews, reading a lot of the reviews, sounds like this is kind of sensitive so um, what people have done to overcome the sensitivity of this ground fault is they removed this and replaced it with a unit that did not have the ground fault so hopefully that's not the case that we'll have to tackle but it's good to know that that can be done so we've got a nice sturdy union unit nice and heavy 
It's got that new inverter smell. Mmm. We'll unbag our converter here. Oh yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. So these are the two new toys that I got for our camper and these are totally unnecessary uh, as is the solar panels. So all of that, all of those items are optional. Uh, if you don't want those you definitely don't have to have them. <laughs> but if you do, if you go with the solar panels and batteries and inverters and converter, uh, expect about uh, the price tag to jump up about two thousand bucks so I'm gonna be happy if this stuff all works out really well so let me show you where we're gonna put these how I'm gonna wire everything and uh, well all that's to come as far as the converter is concerned we will be placing that on the right side of the trailer under this bench seat and I'm thinking currently that I will be putting a piece of plywood here on this back side of the wall and mounting the converter just like so alongside the wall. My power supply, I will run the cord around here which will uh, be connected to an extension cord to our power on the other side of the trailer. We'll run our battery cables towards the front and behind our panel here where all of our DC outlets and fuses and distribution boxes. So this is our electrical panel and so we'll be running those in here. I've got a couple of terminal blocks that we'll be mounting on there. We'll be running cables from our battery to our terminals and also from the converter power to the terminals. And that's the idea anyway. So that is the converter. Now as far as the inverter, we're going to be placing that on the left side of the trailer under this bench seat. And the same, I'll be putting a uh, piece of plywood on the wall and mounting the inverter up against the side of the wall. My cables will run into our electrical panel behind our false wall. And then um, part I haven't quite figured out yet but I think I'm close is getting power from our inverter to our microwave and refrigerator so I removed the microwave and the refrigerator from the uh, cabinet here and I think what I'm end up doing is in the cabinet behind the microwave which I have uh, quite a bit of room I'll be putting an outlet on this corner. That outlet will run to a cable, sort of like an extension cord, out through this cabinet and down into the bench seat. Then, I think what I'll end up doing is running power from our electrical box here, run it through our cabinet around, and I will put a wall here and put an outlet and that will supply power to the microwave and refrigerator when I'm plugged into shore power. I'll take the extension cord cable from our electrical outlet, plug into our outlet and that should supply the power needed for the microwave and refrigerator. I will put another receptacle here with another extension cable that will plug into the inverter. So when I'm on shore power I will plug the extension cord from the electrical outlet behind here. I will plug that into the outlet that's being supplied from my shore power. When I'm boondocking or don't have access to shore power then I will remove that cable bring it over and plug it into the outlet that is plugged directly into the inverter. And that way I'll be able to have a microwave and refrigerator. And mainly the uh, inverter 
<coughs> for me um, it's just basically I need it to run the refrigerator when I'm not plugged into shore power so let's talk about the power from our microwave and our refrigerator so this microwave I purchased man I bet you I purchased this about 10 years ago it's been sitting on the counter of my house waiting for an opportunity to be used in a project which believe it or not we now have and this particular microwave pulls 850 watts at 7.5 amps it's a 120 volt unit so if we take that 120 volts and we multiply that by our 7.5 amps that gives us roughly about 900 watts so this unit is uh, perfectly sized for my inverter which says continuously runs 1800 watts um, with the length of cables that I'm using um, and the voltage drop that I will most likely have I think the inverter will be sized good enough for this microwave most of the reviews that I've seen people are using 1100 1200 watt units and they well, depending on the length of cable and voltage drops uh, in some cases they might have uh, some issues so I'm hoping not to have any issues uh, with this unit being low wattage so that test is yet to come now the refrigerator is 120 volts and it point it, and it pulls approximately 0.8 amps so if we do our math and hopefully uh, it's correct and I'm sure that if I am off somebody is going to throw a comment towards me on how to calculate it right so if you do that's that's much appreciated I don't claim to uh, know all this stuff so if we take the 120 volts and we multiply that by the 0.8 amps we're gonna get approximately 96 to 100 watts of power to run this refrigerator so the refrigerator along with the microwave we will be pulling approximately 1000 amps and that's on the high side so with this 2000 watt inverter capable of 1800 watts continuous using the length of cables that I will most likely be running and suffering from a little bit of voltage drop should still power these two units without any problem microwave you're not running full time maybe five minutes at a time uh, I don't plan on cooking turkeys in it so it should uh, work out really well so that's our next big task uh, is to install our converter and install our inverter and install a remote panel so we can turn the inverter on and off and uh, I'm pretty excited to see it all go in and uh, work pretty decent so what am I going to do now well I've got a little shopping to do I still have to buy the receptacles I still have to buy the outlets I still got to buy uh, probably probably a little bit of cable to run our power to our outlets and such uh, and then we'll get those installed uh, I need to get these units installed and then uh, figure out the length of cables that I'm going to need to run to our terminals and our uh, electrical panel but uh, so it might take a couple weeks for everything's up and running I want to take my time and make sure that we've got them where we want them and uh, that they're going to function properly and then we can test them out that's going to be the cool part uh, the other part that I didn't show you, and I should have, is under this bench seat where the inverter is going to be mounted. I also purchased a, well, I think it's a refrigerator fan that I think I'm going to plumb through the bottom of the floor. And I'm also going to knock some holes into the side panels of our cabinet here from the refrigerator and microwave. So when this unit is running and generates heat 
the refrigerator is running and generates heat. The microwave might generate a little heat. I can uh, flick one of my switches on and exhaust the heat to the outside of the trailer. Uh, so we'll have a little bit of venting going on that during summer months if needed. Um, we've got a good way to exhaust the compartment here where it could generate a lot of heat. Um, I mean, it gets pretty hot here in Central Oregon. No sense in, you know, I'd have to put some stones up here to throw water on it because I have a, a sauna. But, all right, so that's what we're going to do. That'll be our next task. I got some shopping to do, get some parts, and then we'll begin the installation of these units and testing them out. So I hope you stay tuned. I'll try my best to uh, show you how I'm going to install it. Uh, step by step and I sure do appreciate the comments if you see that I've done something wrong uh, or may jeopardize the project uh, please make a comment uh, because uh, last thing I want this thing to do is go up and smoke so with that we're gonna call this a wrap and hope you stay tuned thank you for watching and like the channel subscribe if you haven't already and Stay tuned.